All right, welcome back to lecture 16 of the course Electrical Systems in Agricultural and Biosystems Engineering. This is still on the topic of lighting. And here, the focus is on the computations involving lighting, or particularly illumination. Now, there are two, okay, two known okay, or um, identified okay, methods to compute for uh, illumination. And it's there's the point method, okay, which considers the inverse square law, and the lumen method, which is okay, expanded into the zonal cavity method. But it's just really actually um, the expansion of the lumen method, but is considered sometimes a third method of computation because it divides the um, the room okay, to be illuminated into zones or zonal cavities. Now, going back to the point method, okay, this considers the luminous at a point on the surface perpendicular to the light ray to be equal to the luminous intensity of the source at that point divided by the source uh, by the square of the distance between the source and the uh, end of the point of calculation. So uh, eventually, okay, you have a divisor that is in um, uh, distance squared. So if it's meters squared, okay, it's it's in the metric, okay? So the luminance then, lux, okay, is, the, is equal to the luminous intensity that's in candela or lumens divided by the distance squared. This is a very direct, okay? But there are um, considerations. If there's an in, in incidence angle, then it should be introduced by uh, multiplying the cosine of that incident angle to the original equations of the point method. Now, this uh, method is best for uh, spotlights and then floodlights. What is the, uh, the, questions, the question for illumin, uh, illuminance of spotlights is what is the illuminance on a wall display from a spotlight um, aimed at a display, okay? Now for floodlights, okay, how much light is striking on a point on on the facade of a building or in a parking lot okay where or in in, in games okay in sports games um this uh, the floodlights are very much important so uh this okay takes again takes note of the uh inverse square law uh and it's in the, the um uh, as shown in figure one okay this is a representation of a schematic of this inverse square law. And from this, okay, one candela light source will produce one lumen per square meter at a distance of one meter. And one lux is equal to one lumen per square meter. Thus, it holds true, okay? Thus, this is this, the justification for this method. Now, uh, the computations would be, okay, one candela again is equal to one lux, and then one candela is equal to 12.56 lumens and thus one candela is equal to one, okay? I don't know, one candela is not equal then to one lumen per m squared over SR. And that's the region, okay? Or the square region is the SI unit for a solid angle or equal to the angle at the center of a sphere, uh, subtended by a part of the surface area in, in area to the square of the uh, radius. Now there are different design criteria for um, uh, lighting system design computations. And the uh, these are related to factors that should be considered in the computations. <clears throat> First and foremost is the quantity of light or the illuminance. How much flux is the bulb or luminaire is able to project to a certain location or area. And the next is the quality of light or the nature and the characteristics of light. You have the brightness, the contrast, the glare, the diffuseness, and all of this uh, consideration should be okay, incorporated into the uh, factors, okay? later adjustment factors that are to be considered in the computations. Now, uh, the lighting design criteria, okay, the it is best to, to consider to design with effective, high quality, efficient, and low maintenance luminaires. Later, we'll talk about what luminaires are. Now, design lighting for expected activity in the area to be lighted should also be considered. What is it going to be? Is it a barn house? Is it, go, is it, is it going to be a um, uh, 
a work area or a shed. And these have been already identified in the previous lecture. Now, let's have an example of, a, of the use of the point method, where we have two lamps and a point X, where the X is the uh, point of interest, where we want to determine the, um, the illumination, okay? Now, each lamp has a luminous intensity of 2,000 candela and 3,000 candela, respectively. And what we are supposed to find is the illumination of point X. Let's try to solve for this uh, problem. And let me go, let's go to our um, whiteboard. And again, let's, let's have the drawing for this one, okay? So you have a light source at A, okay? This is A, and you have your uh, B, okay, over here, and then eventually you have your uh, point X, okay, and A and B has a distance of two meters, while uh, B and C, uh, no, B and X is three meters. Now we know that the intensity of A is three thousand. Sorry, it's two thousand. Candela. Uh, the B is 3,000 candela. It's very direct, okay? Using the, um, the illumination then is E equals okay, I over B uh, times the distance of B to X squared because there's no angle, okay? It's uh, direct, okay? it's going to be, it's 90 degrees, okay? The, the incidence angle is zero. So, I mean zero, okay? This is 90 degrees, but the incidence angle to X is zero degrees. Now, this is going to be, okay? Uh, 3,000 candela, sorry, over uh, three meters squared, and it's equal to, okay? 3,000 candela, over nine meters squared, and it's going to be uh, 333, 333 candela over nine squared. This is the final answer. All right, let's go back to our uh, presentation and proceed with the discussion, okay? We have now the Lumen method, okay? This is the second method as uh, discussed a while ago, and this is used in determining the average luminance on a given surface area or work plane. A portion of light is lost, okay, because it reaches the work plane due to losses inherent to the luminaire and the room surfaces. The that okay, that would lead to the this uh, parameter called the coefficient of utilization, and this now represents the portion of the light which is reaches the work area because of those inherent losses okay, in, in the um, illuminance. Now, it, the CU, okay, or yes, the coefficient of utilization or CU measures the effectiveness of a given fixture to direct light produced by lamps to a given workplace. And okay, we have here the E initial equals the ILL, which is the initial light lumens times the CU over the area A. Those, that is the, the relationship, okay? Now, there's what is called a light loss factor, okay? This is because of the, the deterioration of the light source, particularly because of their collection and well, the wear and tear of, of the luminaires. So there's, uh, we introduce another uh, parameter called the E maintained or the maintained illumination, which is equal to the ILL times the CU times the LLF, LLF all over the area. And given that there is a known number of luminaires in a specific area and the desired illumination level, okay, the spacing of luminaires can be determined by the equation area over luminaire equals ILL times CU times the light loss factor all over the E maintained. But let's proceed with the sonar gravity method, which is a, an expansion of the uh, Lumen method. And this method is actually used to determine the Z CU or the coefficient of utilization. While the CU is actually available 
uh, from manufacturers because this is uh, actually in the form of a table, which manufacturers of luminaires or light bulbs or, or, or um, lamps are, are giving their um, customers, okay? Uh, the CU can be determined using uh, this zonal gravity method so that an effective CU can be uh, determined. So in the zonal gravity method, a room is divided into the ceiling cavity, a room cavity, and a floor cavity. Uh, important dimensions of the room include the length, the width, and the height. Okay, these are HCC, HRC, and the HFC, indicating the distance of the, uh, the, the ceiling cavity, the room cavity, and the floor cavity. Now, to in, uh, differentiate okay, or, or to uh, demarcate these areas, you have the, um, the, the HCC, okay, the height from the, uh, the, for the ceiling, is actually up to the level of the luminaires, while the, the floor cavity is uh, the height from the floor okay, to the work plane or where the, 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 there is going to be the actual uh, physical activity involving um, people. Okay? And the next step to do in the zone of cavity method is to determine the cavity ratios that's called the CCR, RCR, and FCR, uh, specifically uh, ceiling cavity ratio, okay, room cavity ratio, and floor cavity ratio. And to solve for that, uh, those values, the cavity ratio of CR, it's five times H times uh, the dimensions L, okay, plus W all over A, A okay. Now, uh, I is the uh, luminous intensity, okay, candela. Now, what we want to do is to compute for the combined effective cavity reflectance, our, uh, raw CC and raw FC. And this is computed by this formula, okay? This is equation seven, where you have, okay, uh, four important, uh, five, five important parameters, the areas of the cavity base and walls, okay? When you say cavity base, it's either the, the, the floor or the ceiling. So um, for example, AB is, if you're going to compute for the uh, raw CC, which is for the ceiling. So this is the area for the cavity of the ceiling and the walls. Okay. Now, and also you have the reflectances for the cavity base and the walls. Okay. Again, base for whichever uh, uh, it is being referred to, okay, the floor or the ceiling. Then there's last, okay, the form factor, which is um, as shown, okay, actually this is incomplete. Okay. Let's try to complete this one. This is incomplete. Okay. Let's complete this formula. It's actually um, A. I don't know why this is incomplete. Over B plus um, 0 0.4750 e to the negative uh, 0 0.2975 times AW over A B. Okay. All right. So, so next is the uh, determination or the uh, um, uh, getting of the coefficient of utilization from the table of a specific luminaire because we want the effective coefficient of, uh, util of utilization. And la lastly, okay, the CU is still adjusted if the FCR or the floor cavity ratio is other than 20% using the adjustment factors. And the adjustment factors are being uh, referred to okay, are the um, factors from from uh, from the glare, okay, from the from the brightness, okay. But okay, uh, there are actually okay, there is actually a a way okay to determine the coefficient of utilization, and this is presented in the book, okay, uh, illuminating by the Illuminating Engineering Society, okay, the Illuminating Engineering Society, the Lighting Handbook, Reference and Application Tenth Edition. Okay, this is chapter number 10, and okay, it details the, the determination of these tables. Okay. Uh, that will not be tackled in this lecture. Okay. It's going to take one subject for, for uh, one, one, one discussion for that. Now, okay, we are, we are uh, particular with the use of these tables. All right, let's have, let's have an example. Okay. And the, the question is, um, 
of I mean the 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 factor the parameter to be determined is the coefficient of utilization for a farm shop which is six meters wide and 14 meters long and a ceiling height of five meters so the dimensions are already given and also the work pane is at four a uh, 1.5 meters above the floor okay and next is porcelain and a melt reflector with 35 degree cw shielding is uh, fluorescent lamps are to be suspended one meters above one meter above the ceiling uh, below the ceiling so this is going to be the hcw uh, uh, hcr sorry and you have the ceiling wall and floor thicknesses at 80 percent 50 percent and 20 percent respectively okay so let's proceed with the solution right now we have we have to draw the uh room cavities okay so it's going to be uh ceiling okay ceiling and you have the work plane and the floor so this is uh one meter and you have here 1.5 that's 1.5 while the total height of this is five meters ah sorry five meters this is the work plane okay work plane this is the ceiling this is the luminaire and this is the floor okay and distance is 14 meters okay that's the length and a a a distance of six meters uh, wide. Okay. Now the luminaire is is provided. It's fluorescent lamps, uh, porcelain enameled reflector with uh, thirty five degrees CW. Now the reflectances. Okay. Um, fluorescent lamp, porcelain, um, thirty five degrees CW, and the reflectances. Okay. Um, this, uh, these are uh, eighty percent. This is for the seeding. Uh, w is fifty percent, and the floor is twenty percent. First step is to solve for the. Um, CR, okay. It's the cavity ratio is okay. So cavity ratio is equal to five H times P over the area. So for the RCR, okay, the room cavity ratio is um, five HRC times L plus W all over LW, which is a okay, five times 2.5 meters times 14 meters uh, plus six. And this is all over 14 meters. Oops, okay. all right, so this is going to be 2.98 or and, um, it's just Round it up to three. Now the CCR, let's set it up. Okay, five times one meter times fourteen plus meters plus six meters all over fourteen meters times six meters, which is going to be one point nineteen or approximately one point two. Okay. Now the FCR. Okay. It is um, five times 1.5 meters times, okay, let's sum it up, 14 meters times six meters, and it will equal to 1.79 or 1.8. Now, we want to compute for the effective cavity reflectance, okay? 
and it's been uh, the, the equation, okay, the equation is, okay, it's actually very long, but let's try to set up one, okay, the DCC, okay, cavity, um, uh, the ceiling, okay, ceiling, it's rho, okay, the reflectance, sorry, this is, uh, I was using a uh, rho, um, different notation. So let's try to correct this one. The raw C, okay. raw C, let's try to correct this one. Reflectance, okay. Raw F, raw W. Okay, so we have raw, um, this is again for the ceilings, for raw C, raw W, um, the F, okay, times two, times the area of C over the area of W times one, okay, times one minus F, quantity minus F plus rho C, reflectance of the ceiling times F squared plus rho W uh, times AB over us, uh, A, AC, okay, AC over AW, the wall. Uh, times one minus f the quantity squared, okay, and divide this by okay one minus rho c rho w a c a w times one minus f squared minus rho w the wall times one minus two a c over a w times one minus f. Now, uh, to get the, okay, the, I mean, to solve for this one, we, we need the F, and it's F is equal to 0 0.026 plus 0 0.502, okay, E times negative 0 0.6750, uh, AW over AB plus 0 0.4750, uh, E to the negative 0 0.2. Uh, 975. Again, this is AC. Sorry, this is AC. Okay, and if you solve for this one, okay, you will get a um, reflectance, no combined reflectance of the cavity and this, uh, the ceiling and the, the wall. Okay, it's going to be 64 percent and ceiling and, and then the, the the wall and the, the ceiling of the floor is going to be 18 percent okay why do we want that uh, because we want to solve for the uh, for efficient of utilization and uh, we'll have to go now to the table okay to get the we have a table for the porcelain enamel uh porcelain enamel Okay, this is a table, okay, uh, showing the, um, the coefficient of utilization for uh, specific uh, types of luminaires based on their uh, intensities and then their, their characteristics. Now, this has been determined again using the uh, formulae, or the, the, the computations presented by the uh, illumination uh, how, what did they say that uh, it's um, eliminating society? Okay, okay, eliminating society. Now, uh, there are okay, there are uh, the the is now okay, the eliminating um, society. Okay, now for our fluorescent lamp. Okay, with uh, an enamel porcelain reflector, okay, we are going to make use of this one, okay, the industrial white enamel reflector. And what we do is we uh, we find the, the CU, okay, okay, that we can use in the final computation for the illumination from this table. So how do we make use of this table? We find that our uh, raw CC is 64, okay or reflectance, the combined reflectance of the ceiling 
and uh, the, the wall is 64. So it's between, it's actually between, um, well, the wall reflectance is what? It's 50. So we only make use of these values over here. Okay. So we have our values over here. Okay. And the values also from here. All right. Now, oh no, sorry, the other one. Okay, this is 50. But we want, okay, but this is for <clears throat> a raw CC of 70 and 50. So we want a value that's in between. So we have to interpolate for the value of 64% because that's between 70 and 50. And we have an RCR of what? Three, okay? So we are, okay, we are looking at values between, okay, um, 60.66 and 0.64. So uh, we know that our, sorry, our, raw cc is 64 so it would be between okay 0. 0.66 and 0. 0.65 we find that by interpolation and we actually get a value of point around 0. 0.65 okay um higher so somewhat uh higher uh but we can already make use of 0. 0.65 as our value all right so that is how to solve for our um our uh, see you okay using those uh, st steps okay presented a while ago now let's proceed with our discussion and we now talk about luminaires again the luminaires presented a while ago okay they are based on okay based on the computations as directed by the ASNA but okay they are actually also um based on um their actual okay their actual um, um effects on a certain uh area so this okay this is still from uh this is from the international commission on uh, illumination or cie and there is, this is just the distribution of the light in an area and this could be related to the um cu eventually okay now let's talk about controlling um controlling our light okay because we know that uh in the location okay it's important that we have switches and that this is now on the topic of lighting system design computation okay we want to design our um our 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 floor plans with our lighting so we have here multi-light really light, light switches okay to okay to show to us okay how it is to set up a three-way switch okay of a certain lamp, okay. Uh, but three-way switches are being used in um, floors, okay, or, or or lighting which encompasses two floors, okay. For example, if you're downstairs and you want to go up, so you first have to light the the the, the switch or light the uh, lamp or la lighting or the luminaire using a switch at the bottom of the downstairs, and then when you go up, you have to turn it off, okay, with another switch. So this is the setup, okay, as uh, this is, for example, the, the downstairs switch, and this is the upstairs switch. So you can turn it off um, in different locations. All right. We will be talking or covering all about switches, okay, in the, uh, or controls in other, in the next topic. But, okay, just to show you the different uh, combinations of our, our different um, uh, switches, switch types for our lighting. That is are being used, okay, in uh, the design of our lighting uh, design or the lighting circuit, okay, the branch circuit for our light. Now this is a guide, okay. This is very much uh, this is very much um, easy to understand, okay. This is self-explanatory, so I would leave it to you to understand, okay. And this is based on the circuitry, okay, based on circuitry and let's culminate this with our uh, symbols okay for our lighting design circuit our lighting system design and this shows a farmhouse with the luminaires and the switch placements so we have our for example our our uh, switch okay over here and this is a three-way switch and another switch outside okay all right so 
uh, the different legends or the symbols or the, uh, the, the yeah the symbols or the legends are identified in this legend table okay for the different um, uh, um, elements in our lighting system design okay so this should be um, um, properly identified in our um, building design plan so that uh, this would be the correct guide for the implementation of um, a lighting system design, right? So in the next topic, okay, the discussion will be on uh, controls. And uh, this will uh, be important, okay, in the um, final, okay, the final topics of the central meter, meter um, central um, unit okay so or for for a farmstead okay i will be seeing you by then thank you for listening and take care